Africa Tech Week takes place soon and the conference will showcase innovation on the continent and opportunities available in the fourth industrial revolution. This year's theme is Unleashing Africa's Tech Giants. And for more on this, I'm now joined by Africa Tech Week founder, Ralph Fletcher. Good evening to you, Ralph. Thank you very much for joining us here on ENCA. First and foremost, just tell us what exactly is Africa Tech Week? What can people expect? Oh, good evening, Abigail, and thanks so much to the viewers for tuning in. So I think this year we're really excited. We've got some exciting developments happening, um, some international Grammy award-winning stars who, who are coming in with new technology, a hologram, in fact. I don't know how many people have experienced a hologram in South Africa, but um, that's going to be quite exciting. We're also joined, um, what we're really lucky, we're joined by uh, representatives from WF, the World Economic Forum, from the African Union, um, next month is going to be Africa Month, and it's the 60th anniversary of the AU. So we joined from African Union policymakers, as well as the UN, um, as well as our own uh, ministers in the presidency, Minister of um, Communications Technology. So a whole host of um, uh, diplomats, should we say, talking around things like policy and, and how, how, do, how do we get uh, regulations to keep up with technology? I think it's one of the big things. Um, in terms of, you know, big tech joining us, we've got the likes of TikTok um, and their content people. We have Microsoft um, and, you know, e even down to Delights, to Canon, to Siemens. So there's a whole host of sort of, sort of tech-enabled giants, global giants who will be joining us, as well as South African leaders. Um, last year's um, Africa Tech Week Organization of the Year was going to be present um, and a whole host of um, dignitaries. So I think there's a lot to look at. Some of the exciting things is things like, um, should we digitize the taxi industry? And it's quite, a, it's quite a, uh, an unusual sort of um, track that we'll be running. And really there, it's, it's looking at, you know, we know that e-hailing has a, had a big impact on the tax industry. And actually looking at it in a reverse way is, is how can technology um, influence things like the, the tax industry in a positive way? And how can it work for both the people who are using the tax industry as well as the tax industry themselves? So how can they become more efficient? How can they create routes that are uh, more productive for them? And how can the, the, the pe people experience places where they need to go directly? So there's a whole host of, of things that are happening. That's actually a very interesting conversation. Um, I did notice that this is not just a one-day event. I think it's, it spans over four days, if I'm not mis mistaken. Talk to us about the program and, and what, what sort of different activities will be happening. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, one thing that we've realized with technology is, and certainly for ourselves, is um, that technology doesn't live on its own. Um, you know, it, we as an organization implemented technology 10 years ago and we failed dismally. Um, and we implemented some big international technology that works in many places, but it didn't work in our organization for what we wanted. And, and what we realized is it's a, it's a human initiative that we need as well. It's collaborative. So, you know, one of the things is how do we make technology work better? And to do that, we need to collaborate amongst ourselves. So you know, a lot of the, it's about knowledge sharing and sharing ideas. And I think that's really, really important. But it's also about networking. And, and what we're seeing is that uh, innovation comes not necessarily in the industries that you know or are from, but often from other organizations and other industries. And so we'll be having large networking opportunities, both through each of the sessions. So we'll have a two-day conference. We then have getaways where people go on site visits to other locations where they'll be able to actually see how organizations are implementing technologies within those. And they'll be having cocktail parties and, again, some networking. And then on the second last night, we'll have the Africa Tech Week Awards where we have about 60 organizations around Africa vying for the Africa Tech Week Awards. And those are organizations not just... South African, African, but also some multinationals. And what we find really powerful there is that um, organizations where they're competing against international organizations, we're finding that through things like frugal innovation and through um, th this innovative mindset we have in Africa, that what we find is, is in fact that they, they, they compete exceptionally well against their, their international counterparts. So you have the networking and, and some other local events as well.
Hmm. And then, Ralph, as a country, how are we doing uh, from a technological standpoint? You did mention advances that can be made in the taxi industry, but where else are we lacking? Where else do you see opportunity where technology can move us forward? Yeah, I think that, that you know, we're joined, one of the, the speakers that we're joined by is the, the, the they call him the richest uh, doctor in the world. He's a billionaire. Um, and that's Patrick Sun Shun. And he actually is a South African that moved to America. He studied um, as a doctor. And he now runs a big biotech company. He's just recently invested in, in South Africa. So obviously biotech is, is really big. Um, and I think that, you know, you, you, you asked a couple of questions there. What are the opportunities? The opportunities are immense. I mean, we have so many challenges, and I think that's where entrepreneurs thrive. Um, but to make those challenges happen, we really need an enabling environment. An enabling environment isn't just policy, and obviously policy, policy makers, regulators, that does form part of it. But you need the, the ecosystem of investors as well. You need the, the ecosystem of the entrepreneurs. And we certainly do have that. I mean, if you talk about um, investors, um, you know, venture capital, for instance, in the last six years, had a 15x, a 15x input into Africa. You know, we, we've gone over the five billion dollar mark, which is at 90 billion dollar rands. Um, and you've seen a thousand different startups being invested into. So there's that. What we're also seeing is big organizations. I mean, we talk about the big multinationals like MultiChoice who are going to be there. You know, our big organizations, the FNBs, the Standard Banks, um, the Telcoms, those sort of organizations are investing heavily in our startups and our ecosystem as well. So where you have the 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 right regulatory environment, where you have, you know, the policymakers who are definitely coming. You've got the city of Cape Town, Westco also partnering us. Then you have, you know, the big multinationals involved. You have the, the scale. You know, you can take an organization in the fintech industry, and that's typically where South Africa and Africa has been very, very strong. But that's moving. It's moving into things like logistics now and even e-commerce. You know, we'll be discussing e-commerce, I think, in South Africa. We spend about four to five percent of our retail purchases through e-commerce. Mm -hmm. In someone like China, for instance, it's well over 20, 30 percent of what they purchase. So there's massive opportunities for for different sectors to grow. There is indeed. And then I, I wanted to chat uh, about something that seems to be trending over the last couple of weeks. And there's been some mixed reaction with regards to the development of AI and chat GPT. Some people are for it. Others are not. What is your view? Um, can we use this as, as something that can enable us to, to do a lot more? Do you see it as a positive um, uh, influence or do you see it as more of a disadvantage? Yeah, I think it's a positive influence if it's used correctly. Um, so I think that's the, the first point. Um, but, but other than that, I think it's like it's the, the new eye. So I think that, you, you know, what we know and what we have figured out, we normally can excel at. And I think what AI is going to do is going to bring a new equation to things. It's going to look at data slightly differently to whatever we knew before. And it's going to reinvent the rules. It's going to reinvent the rules of nutrition, of healthcare, of investing, you know, and, and so I think what it's going to do is it transition us to a new opportunity that is, you know, really exciting in my view. Um, I'm not sure if you've used AI. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we, that we do is in, in doing things like Africa Tech Week is we use it on, on numerous other things. And so that actually we've got 50 people that work for us and probably all of them have used AI now in different versions. And I think what you'll find is it, it's, not, it's not doing anything they don't necessarily know, but it's just shortening the time of doing things. So it's just allowing a little bit more intelligence. And so that, I suppose the challenge is, is that it is an enabler, and I think it is a positive thing. And, and so now, really, how do we create these opportunities for disadvantaged communities, and how do we bring other people along? And I think that AI can do that, and I think it can do that in terms of education. I think that, you know, we, we can have systems in the education where, you know, you can use things like, you know, tutors online who speak to many different schools and AI will, will allow us to help and, and educate people in different languages. So I think there's, there's so many capabilities that this allows now that we should embrace it. And I think you know, human nature is that we are concerned with new things. Mm -hmm. But actually, as humans, we embrace change so well. And I think if you if you just try and use it, and that's really what it's about, 
then it is good. Obviously, we still need our regulators, we still need our policymakers, and we still need business. And, and generally, we're finding that business is very good at safeguarding our best interests at heart. And we saw that probably most in COVID, where um, many people were polled in terms of trust, trust in terms of government, trust in terms of media, and trust in terms of business. And, you know, I'm in the media industry, and, and for us it was really refreshing to see that people for, saw more trust in business than they did in both government and media. And so there is a change, and I think that organisations know they have a responsibility, and that is certainly coming out. But we have to be mindful, and we still have to make sure that things are done for the right reasons. Definitely. Uh, I was reading through your press release for Africa Tech Week and there was mention of something called smart municipalities and smart cities. First of all, how do we define that and also how far off are we here in South Africa to getting to a point where uh, we are seeing the development of such infrastructure? Yeah, I think that smart cities are, you know, um, are quite interesting. I think there's, you know, um, you know, ways that we can create um, food sources, for instance, in buildings. So you're seeing in Singapore hydroponic plants where you'll have a whole floor instead of it being offices. It will be hydroponic plants. And it's really, really effective. And logistically, obviously, the cost of getting the food there and making it fresh is important. And, um, you know, I think that we, we spoke a little bit probably more around Africa Tech Week, how do we create the smart villages? Because I think that it's been well documented, these smart cities and how they can run. But, you know, I can't help but think how South Africa, especially in the last couple of years, is, is really, and certainly Cape Town, has really been positioned as a tourism hub and a destination. And I think that what technology can do is it doesn't mean that we need to disrupt the ecosystem of nature is that we can actually create um, ecosystems outside of these big cities. And we're seeing the transition of people moving away from big cities um, over COVID. And, and I think it is gonna be a future trend, but, but I think if we can create the smart um, villages, that's really important. And, and our partner, Centec, obviously they're pioneering um, the, 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 the transition of, of you know, stations in these areas that can give people the technology and I suppose the bandwidth then to make sure that no one is left behind. Indeed. Ralph, just quickly, because we are running out of time, um, who is the type of person that you want to see attend uh, Africa Tech Week? And is it open for anyone to attend? How, are those, uh, how does those details work? Yeah, so you can go to the website africatechweek.coza. Um, you know, so we have two options. One is the online, which is done through a program called Hopin, where people can still engage, ask questions, and go through the whole program. And then we have about 500 sort of VIP dignitaries, um, CEOs of organizations. We have leaders in terms of disruptors in their organizations, CIOs. Um, and policymakers will be coming together and obviously discussing these issues. So it, it, isn't, it isn't exactly open for everybody. There is a cost to getting involved in the live one. Um, and there's, a, there's a, a smaller thing cost for the online one. And, they'll, and they will be showcasing it to a big audience on things like Facebook and other programs as well. So there, there will be some other uh, channels for people to engage with it. But I think it's really important that... Um, pe people get to know about technology because for us, you know, if I think of 10 years or 20 years from now and I think about the Africa or the South Africa that I want to live in, I know that technology is going to have a big impact on that. And so, you know, in, in terms of the skills for my children, in terms of the skills for the people within my organization, um, I, I see it as so profoundly important. Um, and it is an enabler to create jobs, I think, to healthcare. Um, to better education, to better infrastructure. So it is going to impact us in so many different ways. So it's one of those things you do want to definitely be involved in and, and, um, and get to know. But certainly for the two days, it's, it's more, more going to be um, your C-suites who are going to be there. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Ralph, for your time and your insights and just sharing a little bit about what uh, Africa Tech Week is all about. We appreciate your time. That was Ralph Fletcher, the founder of Africa Tech Week.